protect yourself, have the shells with 12 gauge shotgun. And in fact, you don't need 30 rounds to protect yourself. Fire two blasts. I promise you, who's ever coming in is not going to. You don't need an AR 15. This is ECM right here. So I have a little bit of salt water in, the, in there. I have um, my voltage. And the closer I get, the more current will flow. I'm still not drawing very much at all. You might be able to see the water is getting slightly discolored. Uh, that's ECM sludge. There will be a lot of that. And the closer you get, the faster it goes. So these aren't great conductors. I'm not pulling really anything for amperage. Nothing measurable anyway. Um, but you can see that material is coming off there. And it's bubbling. And uh, yeah, that's uh, the bubbling is uh, electrolysis. That's um, splitting water into hydrogen and oxygen. Yep, that's ECM. Nice and messy. Here's kind of an overview of the setup. So right here I have a 12 volt golf cart battery. Um, I have two leads hooked up to it. Uh, white is positive, black is negative. Four cups of warm water. I, it's warm because I really just want it to dissolve the salt faster. And this is just some little, I wouldn't call it a teaspoon, but I'm going to use about that much worth of salt right now. And I'm just going to throw that in there. Really you want to use fresh solution for flushing and have like a, you know, a pump going. But this will serve to, to show a demonstration roughly of how this process works zip tile do the job nicely okay so we got some decent contact with our work piece let's put this in the salt bath I wasn't able to find tubing of the perfect inner diameter which is actually just under the bullets um, diameter because you want the rifling to cut into it. I used a quarter inch aluminum rod as the boring electrode. I 3D printed some fittings to keep the rod centered and added some o-ring recesses to keep things from leaking out. So basically this whole setup is contained. Pressurized water feeds in from the bottom of the pipe and then it flows up through the top of the pipe carrying away bubbles and iron particulates. ECM sludge into uh, a reservoir on the bottom, a bucket on the bottom, uh, which can later be settled out or centrifugally separated. At the peak, I was running 12 volts at about 15 amps and was cutting about a thou uh, a minute, I wanna say, yeah, about a thou a minute. So it's a pretty tunable process and easy to you know not get too carried away. In rifling is where you really get a taste for the magic of ECM. Whatever is closest to the electrode uh, gets cut away or eroded away first. I 3D printed an insulating plastic mandrel and then wrapped it in copper wire. Even soft 18 gauge copper is still pretty stiff and it needs something to retain it in the plastic mandrel. So melting it in there worked great. The mandrel is printed with passageways for water to flow over the copper wire in order to flush away any bubbles and any iron particulate. The mandrel insulates the lands from the grooves and gives a nice sharp separation between each lobe of the electrode. For this test I was constantly checking the dimensions with my calipers and after a few tries I should be able to turn this into kind of a recipe. Someone pointed out that with this process these mandrels are specific to a given barrel length, a given caliber, and a given twist rate. Uh, and that's true. Uh, these mandrels are one-trick ponies. So yeah, these rifling electrode mandrels are specific, but they're cheap and they should pretty much last forever since ECM is a non-wearing process. The final operation that I had to perform was chambering. In this test, I did that with a wire-wrapped form. In future chamberings, I'm not going to do that. I think I'm just going to use a straight uh, aluminum rod. 
Some gunk got stuck to the chambering electrode and prevented flushing of the particulates away, so it didn't erode in one part of the chamber, and I had to clean that out by hand with a specially made finish reamer. I alternated between the finish reamer and the dummy cartridge uh, until it fit in there, and I had to go a little more because the real cartridges are a little bigger. In the end, I was able to chamber a 44 Magnum. It's rifled, and it should be ready to test next time I get out to the range. Well, that's it for today. I hope you get an idea of how electrochemical machining works and how it can be used to make barrels. If you're interested in buying some of the parts that you saw, the rifling mandrel, the uh, pipe fittings with hose barbs on them, o-ring cutouts, all that stuff, swing by liberator12k.com. I just set that up. Let me know that you're interested. And if there's enough people out there, I'll go ahead and uh, see what I can do to make some of those kits available for sale. Thanks.